Hello, my name is Lorraine Garvey of District 32, and I have got the absolute pleasure of having a discussion today and learning more about Cedar Anderson from my assistant. How are you, Cedar? I'm well, Lorraine. How are you? I am very well, thank you. And just for people um, who are listening or watching, you are in the Gold Coast. Is it yeah, warm? Yeah. yeah, it's actually beautiful outside. I'm sitting in a cold office, but it's like 24 degrees outside. So this is winter here on the coast, and that's why we love it to live here oh dear yeah i usually like the seasons but i mean we're in wa perth and this has been the coldest one ever here in yeah. 20 years it's uh, it's crazy you can now go to the, the shop and buy a big padded jacket and a hat and a scarf <laughs> that you wear for maybe three days and that's it yeah, yeah. that's right that's right yeah. the same here yep yeah. um so i'm looking forward to i'll be in the gold coast next week so i'm looking forward to seeing everybody um there but Cedar, for the purpose of this uh, conversation, I'd like to know, I'd like you to just share with people, you know, a bit about your business, what you do, who you do it for. And then I'd like to just deep dive into a little bit about who you are, you know, um, as, as a business owner, as a business person, what are your learnings um, that you can share? But first of all, um, Cedar, what is my assistant? So uh, my sister uh, is a business, we're a business about taking care of, of individuals who have a disability and helping them to live independently and thrive. So um, this is my company. I started it back in 2017 because at that time I needed help um, and it got me thinking about individuals who didn't necessarily have their own network of people surrounding them. And so that was the catalyst for me to think, well, what happens to, to those that don't have support? How can I help them? And that was uh, was 2017. And so now we're a registered NDIS provider. We provide assistance with aged care and we work with a government, couple of government contracts as well. So, yeah, wow. it uh, keeps me busy. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's, so it's some good growth there, you know. Um, but um, So and my sister then, are you providing, is that people as well as the equipment and, and home help? Or do you provide both or is it just, you know, what sort of support services do you actually provide? So no equipment. Um, so we uh, work around and work with clients and their families. So predominantly the majority of our business is about providing personal care and supported independent living. So we work in clients' as, um, houses. We provide 24-hour care. We help them to enter the community. We help them to attend appointments. We help them to live their life. So Beautiful. we do meal preparation. We do personal care. We do a range of tasks um, in order for them to be as independent as possible. And I think that's just fantastic. I've just recently gone through, my mum had a stroke. You know, she was in Scotland. Obviously, I'm yeah. in Australia. And um, when she got out, she managed to have that in home help, you know, carers coming in three, four times a day, making sure that she was okay. And that's such a comfort. It's a comfort to yeah. us, but it's a comfort to her as well to know that she's yeah. always going to have somebody in there to to do whatever it is that she needs doing, you know, or Correct. that she wants to do. And it's just, yeah, it's such a comfort. Yeah, and it's you know, and it is, and that's one of the key points that we need to remember. Um, it is about what it is that they want to do. So your mum would be quite um, uh, deliberate with things that she enjoys on yeah. a daily basis that are important <laughs> to her, and, and that's what we want to make sure happens to everybody. So people who have a disability, we tend to think that they don't really have choices or, or make, can make decisions like we do, but they most certainly do, and we need to um, award them, uh, sorry, afford them that same. Uh, respect and opportunity and that's what we do and we do that very well well you've, you've had tremendous growth and um, then since 2017 Cedar you must be doing something yeah. very right yeah so at you know I started the business with my sister she was my first employee because I didn't have the I had the business background but I didn't have the hands-on backgrounds so she had the qualifications so we started there uh, and then today um, we have 35 staff yeah so it's still not as big as some of our competitors but we're very um, growth is slow and measured and making sure that we're doing it the right way. And that's why you've now got a sustainable business, which Correct. also you just won an award. you want to tell us a little bit about your recent yeah. award? So, um, you know, it's been five and a half years since I started the business and I was very conscious of the fact that we need to start recognising the efforts that we've done in the local community. And so this year has been about trying to get some recognition and, and um acknowledgement of the the work what we've done so yeah um won the monthly category for the gold coast business excellence awards for health and well-being so we're now um in the draw for the annual award which will be done in december but even that in itself it was an opportunity for us to reflect back on what we've done and what we've accomplished and from 2017 to today so yeah it was um a really a big eye opener it was great 
it really is fantastic. I mean, we're I'm here in WA. We're I meet hundreds of business owners, right? We've been relationships yeah. with hundreds and hundreds of business owners um, throughout the life cycle of our business. And to go from where you're at, you know, from zero to 35 staff mm -hmm. and dealing with all these external organizations in seven years yeah. is, is phenomenal, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, well done. <laughs> yeah, thank <laughs> it, you. Yeah. Saying, you know, it comes from a heart-centered heart place, and um, which always helps. Yeah, 100%. So we, we like to, you know, I've just been on a conference overseas and, and some of the terms that I came away, which really were, yes, that's what we do, was a purpose-led business. We, we we do it with a value and a reason for why we, we do what we do. And, um, you know, and you asked, you know, about business background and that sort of stuff. And I think everything that I've done up until seven years ago has led me to this and this is why I'm doing this, yeah. Which is the beautiful thing, isn't it? Yeah. You just realize now whatever you're going through, it's going to lend you. You like the way you're meant to be, or where you're going to be. You know, um, be positive. Um, but what 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 would you say is your biggest learning then throughout that journey, Cedar? Uh, it has been about um, you can't do it all, and you have to um, you know, you have to bring bring people into the business who know different things to you. Like I'm not an expert in in many things, and so I need to rely on those individuals who are experts and give them um, an opportunity to support me and to support the business to be as as effective and efficient as as it can be. I really, I really love that. Um, an early tip that I was given you know, back in the day when I was first getting into business was always hire people who are better than you. Yeah. And because I've been taught that, you know, it sticks with you. You don't challenge it. You don't no. think there's nobody there. I don't think there is anybody better than you to run your business, but there's someone better at marketing and there's someone better at customer service and there's someone better at, you know, all Accounting. the different aspects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Aspects yeah. of it. And, and there is always somebody better than you. You can always find somebody better than you for that individual role. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'm a firm believer in synergy. You know, the the power of the of the the whole is far better than just one individual across the the gap. You know, so it's it is very much about getting the right people on your team to help you be as successful as you can be. Yeah. What do you wish you'd known when you started? Uh what I wish I had known. Um, that I can't do everything and that um, <laughs> I have, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a big picture person and so, so a client or, or a person in the sector will say something to me and I'll go, what if we did that? And then I'll go, oh, yeah, let's do that. And then it's like, no, 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 let's just keep it back into what we're, what we're good at and what we do well. And so I can't, I can't fix everything. I can't help every individual. I have to do what we know, um, well, what I know that I'm capable of doing well um I'm a, a naturally you know I'm a what's called a mechanic I'm a problem solver I'm a fixer uh, and so when someone comes to me and says oh you know there's something I need to help with I'll go yeah can do that but then if it takes me away from what we're from our core business I need to bring myself back online and that's that's the biggest challenge is that I have to stop and focus I can't do everything I can't be uh, everything to everyone I have to be one thing and and focus on that and that's the biggest thing for me that's but when I started the business it's like well, we could do this 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 and this but as we've grown I've discovered you know through learning as well as through the support of the team that there are certain things that I'm better at and that they're better at and we need to focus on those because they will give us the better the, the best outcome absolutely um and I think so often, you know, even through my own experience as well, you know, we can sometimes, I'm the big picture thinker as well, um, and which is great when I work with Dean. Um, yeah. Because Dean, I'll say, you know, here's the grand plan, but he'll say, well, well I'm the member. This is yeah. what I think. And he, he brings he brings it back down into reality, you know, right. which is a great um, yin and yang. But I'm always, I think we can make the mistake of always going after the new and the refresh and you get excited about creating new things or I yeah. get excited about creating new things and I'm off yeah. creating it. I'll stop. Yeah, that's you know, right. So much growth and improvement and creation that can be done with what you've got. Mm, yeah. Um, well, now I now have a book that I just, I, I've just all the business ideas. Okay, I just keep a, just write it down. Maybe some somewhere in the future you might be able to use it. But right now, just focus on what you know you can do. I, thought, I think that's great. You know, to actually acknowledge it, park it. It's there. Yeah. And then if you're not 
question yourself then what if <laughs> you know it's there um, but I mean if you were uh, if you were going to start a new business what would it be <laughs> uh, I really don't know a new business uh, look I'm a creator like I I like to paint I like to um, I like to be creative because I know the joy that it gives me. I'm actually studying art therapy and that sort of stuff. And so oh, beautiful. If, if I could walk away from this today, I think that's the next thing that I would do would be to start something that works with kids or young adults in order to help them be creative. Because we tell everybody that you can't paint or you can't draw if it doesn't, if it's not a representation of exactly what's sitting there in front of you. But I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Everybody's creative one way or another, and it's just being supported to, to bring that out. And that's that would be the next path that I would take. Yeah, okay. Yeah, people just express it differently. Like yeah, that. 100%. Yeah. Well, that's good. I didn't know that about you, um, Cedar, and I love that. You know, I love peeling back the layers and seeing what's behind, what's behind the face of the business. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that we don't know about you? Either that we should know or we should know personally. <laughs> yeah, anything so you're willing to share? <laughs> uh, oh no, there's a plenty. I'm, I, um, you know, I'm, I'm a community contributor, so I'm part of a couple of charities and part of Hope Island Rotary Group here in Queensland. Um, I'm a learner. I'm studying art therapy as well as studying palliative care, so I like to constantly learn oh, wow. new things. Um, I'm a traveller. I love to travel. I'm going to Spain in in uh, September. Uh, not Spain. Oh. Sorry, I'm going to Greece in September for for nice. three months. Um, and that's to do a creative workshop for ten days. So, wow. yeah, there's lots, there's lots that uh, under in the in the layers. There's lots. Okay, it's mm. one of my favorite places, Greece and the whole world. It's, yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. We're supposed to go in 2020, but then COVID hit, so it's a couple of years in the making. Wow. Mm. So you have to tell me all about it. It's a nice place to go for a therapy workshop. Tell you, you're yeah. combining everything there into one. But what, so what's next for you then, Sarah? What is next for my sister? What is the growth plan in there? What's the what's the vision? Yeah, so we're I'm waiting on a couple of things. Um, we have some government contracts that that um, support our NDIS. So NDIS is not the only thing that we do. Um, my corporate background has allowed me to make a decision that you can't have all your eggs in the one basket. You need to diversify and have a different income streams coming in. So we've got the NDIS. We've got some other government funding that we have as well. Um, I'm waiting to hear back on some other um, tenders that we uh, that we um, that I submitted in February. And if they come off, then that will be a game changer for us. And that will allow me to, to broaden the horizon. Um, last year, I spent the 12 months going to all the disability expos here in Queensland from a regional perspective. And that allowed us to make a decision around strategically, where is there the most need and who is it that we can help? Uh, and I we identified there was two key areas. And one of those was Toowoomba, which we've set up earlier this year so we're operating up there um and now that we're in the later part of the year um we're looking to establish up into townsville as well so that will give us um better opportunity to help more people mm. that's brilliant see that i've probably learned more about you in this uh 20 minutes than a half and the times that i've been across there it's been really great to talk to you yeah uh, thank I you. you can see the telstra Business Women of the Year award up there as well somewhere. No, I don't think so. I don't, I'm, not, no. I'm not. No, I don't know about that. No. <laughs> well, I can see you there in review dots. Um, but look, thank you very much for sharing. Thank you for sharing uh, what you do. It's been great to learn more about you. Congratulations on your award. I'm sure you. you're going to nail all of those goals. Um, you've done amazing in seven years. Um, who knows? It's the, the world conquer. Um, in the next, I don't know. I don't want to conquer the world. We just want to help those that need a little bit of extra help. That's all. Well, your version of conquer. Yeah, <laughs> your version of conquer. So, yeah. Lexi, thank you very much for sharing your time. This has been excellent. Thank you very much, and I look forward to assisting you in your own business growth and seeing you next week. Well, I look forward to it. Thank you. I'll see you later. Bye bye. Bye.